Edutrainment Workshops, the insurance industry's leading education and training platform presents Life Insurance, the entry-level series, the products, the underwriting, and the planning applications to position your practice as the premier provider of insurance products in your community. Get on board, get on track, get to where you're going. And now, your Edutrainer, National Insurance Columnist, Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone. I'm Steve Savant, your Edutrainer and coach for our Edutrainment Workshop Series, our entry level into Introduction into Annuities. And if you're just coming into our class today, I really want you to go back to our first course, really watch these in sequence, in chronology, because you'll really get a better learning curve and it's a greater tutorial and you'll build on certain things that you really appreciate. And anything you see in the show that we're using in, in actual giveaways or, or actual pieces of PDFs and so forth, feel free to order it. It's just call me, or call me, write me at the biz at brokersalliance.com, B-I-Z, that's brokersalliance.com, the biz, T-H-E-B-I-Z at brokersalliance.com and I'll send it to you absolutely free. When you come out to our site, by the way, www.brokersalliance.com, you can see all our former shows. They're all in our archives on our red on-demand button videos. Just hit that video button and it'll put you right into our archives, not only for all of our edutrainment workshops, but it'll also have our five-day daily internet show, The Business Insurance Zone, as well as my weekend show called Welcome to the Weekend with Steve Savant. Okay, well, let's get into it today. What I want to do is I want to talk to you about some of the basics. Yesterday, we talked about taxation. Today, I want to talk about basic ideas that everybody's confronted with every day. The first thing I want to show you is our chart on inflation. Okay, we're talking about inflation. And now we have a great chart. This is a great chart, I have to say. They're using the baseline of 1967. Yes, I was there, and uh, somewhere time in high school. And they're using this as the index and the percentage of increase and the purchasing power of the dollar. You'll see a marked decrease, 1974, the power of the dollar, and the, actually the purchasing power of the dollar according to inflation. Remember, it's gonna be different than what we're gonna show you in a little bit. So I look at this and look at the marked decline. So immediately, let's say, let's say start in 1974 because there's a little gap of years missing. So every year I started seeing inflation chew into the purchasing power of the dollar. So if I'm looking at this and saying, if I'm using annuities, one of the things that I like about annuities is, is that because I don't have to pay taxes until I use it, I'm actually accumulating numbers. And generally, I'm looking at, sometimes people say, well, what is the break even point? Depending upon what kind of return you're getting and what your tax bracket is, it could be as early as four years of deferral could just pretty much be fantastic for your actual total net pocket in pocket cash or it could be as high as, it could be as long as six or seven years. So it depends upon where it is. I can do the calculation and tell you when do I think it's a really good break even point where I'm really winning. So sometimes I used annuities as a hedge to inflation as long as my client doesn't have to take constructive receipt of the annuity. So if I'm stalling, if I'm deferring out a long period of time, this can become powerful and help me in the battle of inflation. This is what you're up against. Look at this period. We're looking at a 30 year period here where it's marked decline in 1974 when I got out of college, we're sitting at 68, 0.68. Of percent, so it's worth 68 cents to the actual physical dollar. When I look at the inflation all the way down into present day in 2011, I'm looking at 15 cents. That same dollar that I used in 1974 has a purchasing power of 15 cents. I mean, I just want you to see the gravity of what I'm looking at here and why annuities could be helpful in our hedge against inflation, especially again. The hedge becomes important if you use deferral or you stall taking constructive receipt of your annuity. So I want to be able to show you this just because I think it's dramatic. And remember, these statistics come right from the U.S. Bureau of Labor. And so when I'm looking at that, it kind of gives you a good idea of what you're up against. So if our dollar purchasing power is worth it now, what's it going to be like at the end of my retirement? Well, inflation has been fairly flat over the last five to seven years. And if we're gonna print more money, people say inflation is gonna then go back up again. I saw a picture one day of a woman in Germany in the 1920s actually burning German marks, their currency, burning money in her stove. It was cheaper to burn the currency than it was to use the currency to buy wood for her stove. 
Did you hear that? That is the pre-depression Europe and it caught the United States about four to five years later. So when you think about inflation, think about this chart and think about that, that name I just gave you. Now let's go and get the consumer price index. Now this is a little different graph, the purchasing power of $1. The consumer price index is the government's method of measuring the price of goods and services bought by urban wage earners and clerical workers. The graph below actually charts the decline in the purchasing power of $1 since 1967 as, a re as it relates to inflation. Over the last 44 years, the average inflation rate in the U.S. has been 4.43. Actually, if you clocked it over the last five, six years, especially after the recession, it's been almost absolutely flat. Now, interesting to know that that consumer price index is actually for goods and services. You know, these are supposed to be the commodities of life, and yet they don't have in certain things that I believe are really needed, like gasoline would be one of them. So sometimes I wonder if this consumer price index is even worth looking at just because it really doesn't take the all-in numbers and, a, and really gives you an idea. And since we're using and buying annuities for income, and we're using it many times for retirement supplemental income. This is really important. That's why I said, if I'm deferring with an annuity and not having to pay taxes, and I'm stalling it out until I have to, until I'm forced by, take, by using distributions of my annuity, I'm really gonna be able to somehow get a little bit of a hedge on my inflation, on the consumer price index. That's my goal. I'm tr what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do something to be able to mitigate what I already know is gonna happen, which is my dollars just becoming less and less powerful to buy certain items that I need every day. And I have to pay a regular home uh, rental or a home mortgage. I have to pay regular bills that seem to be always going up, like utility bills and gasoline. So those are just some of the concepts but anytime I can defer with my annuity later on into my life, I'm actually helping myself by not paying those taxes during that time period. I'll have to ultimately pay it, but you actually make money by deferral. Now what I want to do is I want to go to one more chart here before I go into resources and news. Okay, this is the second part of the consumer price index chart I was talking about. And here you can see the consumer price index as it goes up from 1971. It was, you can see it was relatively flat during the late 60s, early 70s. And then we had a huge period of inflation during the Carter years. And you know we had some, some problems during the early Reagan years, but then it just starts taking off. This is the reverse. It kind of shows you, as in the first one, we showed inflation as the, po the power of the dollar kept going down. This shows you that the cost index, how it keeps going up and accumulating, and that's where the feature, that's why I say inflation, as a result of this in 67, we have to really be careful because we have to position our clients in retirement so that they can have more money in their hand and any time I can defer because remember, there's certain things that I may not be able to defer. Maybe Social Security is one of those things. Possibly, my, especially when I get to 70 and a half, my qualified plans, I can't defer that. So I may want to defer this as long as I can. And every time I defer not paying taxes, I'm getting a little edge and some of that edge can be applied to the consumer price index or the inflation. And now what I want to do is I want to show you a couple resources that you can use in your practice and when you can go over the weekend, when you see this show, you can say, hey, I'm gonna go check out these sites. They're really helpful sites, and I think you'll enjoy some of the really good resources that I have here. Now I have a list here of tremendous resources for annuities, and again, I pulled this off of annuityspecs.com, the uh, uh, software due diligence of Cheryl Moore, who's of course one of the, the number one authority, I, actually I think she's number one authority, in indexing. And look at this here, this, these are some really good helps. One of the first ones I like is www.annuityrate.com. The website provides regulatory information on annuities, index annuities in particular, and it's for home office personnel, legislators, state insurance regulators. You can kind of see what they're reading, and I kind of try to keep on that. When I write articles for some of our trades and so forth, I look at this just to make sure, is there any action out there, and I can see what the regulators are looking at. A second one, and it's really popular with the public, and you need to know this. You need to go out to www.bankrate.com. This is your direct competitor to annuities. Taxable money markets, taxable CDs. It's really important for you to understand what's in the market. Every duration is mapped out. It could be a 30 day, 90 day, year, two year, five year CD. Look at these rates. 
the rates that we're showing many times are superior and these are taxable events whether the client uses it or not. So I want you to get used to and feel, uh, you know, get a little bit of learning curve here and hit www.bankrate.com. Now another one's called, and I love this one, it's called Go Figure Now. Dot com. Go Figure Now is a website that's, that's a tool built by actuaries. Now, before you freak out too much, it's not that bad, and it compares how index annuities would perform historically based on your inputs. If you want to see something in arrears, kind of like we do in life insurance with 20 and 30 year lookbacks, or with whole life when we look at their dividend history, you can go back out to gofigurenow.com. And again, well, if you want this list, say, Steve, send me that list at thebiz at brokersalliance.com. Just write me, T H E B I Z at brokersalliance.com, and I'm happy to send you this whole list so you can go and see it. Another one is called the indexannuity.org. The information on this website is almost all done by, it's all on index annuities and it provides articles, crediting method returns, buyer behavior, and market commentary. To me, this is another place where I like to dip my toe out there, see what's going on. It's run by a great guy. I, I, we, we like to call him Dr. Jack and he's really good and he has a lot of good information. And if you're in a learning curve and you're just trying to understand annuities and the power of indexing and the power of deferral, that's a great site. Another one on here is the National Association of Insurance Commissioners site. And here's where you get into a little heavier legislation language and you can see what's coming in your, possibly in your state. And that's www.naic.org. Now, on, there's a couple other ones here. I've noticed that clients are now becoming very wise in choosing who their advisors are going to be and they're going to FINRA Broker Check. When they go to FINRA Broker Check, they're looking at your record on your U4. What have you done? Do you have a good history? Do you have any complaints against you? Sometimes you want to go check that just to make sure there's no mistakes on your record. Of course, that's if you're security licensed. So if you are a FINRA registered rep, you need to go out there and check that and just to make sure all the numbers and anything that's out there is correct. Another one I like is standardandpoors.com. Why do I like standardandpoors.com? Because the vast majority of indexing right now and some of the variable contracts in annuities are with Standard and Poor's or the S&P 500. You'll want to look at the S&P 500 as well as the evaluate the, this is evaluation for client, excuse me, client and carrier financial strength. I look at six different um, rating services. I'll show you those next week. And those rating services, you'll be able to measure it. The actual thing that I was alluding to earlier is at the S&P 500 site, so you can see all those. But this is the regulatory site that actually rates or ranks carriers. Another one that I really like is, and this is another one by Cheryl Moore, and it's uh, hysterical actually. It's called www.indexannuitynerd.com. And this is a classic of Cheryl's. It's a great one. It, the website contains relevant index annuity news from the industry, newspapers. It's really a collection site. She gathers intel, and this is an excellent site when you say, gee, Steve, I need to know where to go on this. Now, the next thing I want to show you, last before I close out our shop today, is I want to show you the news areas that you can go for up-to-date news on annuities. In other words, here's another one, the news, annuity news. And if you're looking for really things that are up-to-date resources, that are reputable sources for information on annuities, and especially and specifically indexing especially, you can go out to this area. They have annuity news. I like to read that. AM Best, Best Wire, which is hot off the press. And these are people who actually watch our industry 24-7. Also, the Bank Insurance and Security Marketing Online. I always like to go there. I kind of like to see what the enemy's doing. Not that they're enemies, but you know what I mean. And of course, Broker World Magazine, they carry some really, uh, really for a trade magazine, they're really up on it. And we like to wa watch it. That's one of the reasons why if you're going to purchase a mag, that'd be one of them. And indexannuitynerd.com, that's Cheryl's site again. Again, she has great sites. Insurancebroadcasting.com, as well as Insurance Newsnet. Investment News, Life Health Pro, LinkedIn.com's Index Annuity and Index Life Issue Group. All this is on there. Producers Web, which we write on a lot. You'll see my, my articles there. And of course, CherylMoore.com. All these are available. If you say, Steve, I want all this good resource and these newswire services, just write me, thebiz at brokersalliance.com, T-H-E-B-I-Z at brokersalliance.com, and I'll send it to you free. This has been an edutrainment workshop, the educational division of the National Insurance Clearinghouse, the marketing arm of Brokers Alliance.